Here's a question for you. Is the world that you wake into every day as real as it seems to be? I will tell you why it is not. Think about your reality right now. What is it like? You see this odd individual, namely me, looking back at you from a screen, babbling nonsense, right? But I'm not real, of course. I'm just tiny little pixels that are constantly changing on the screen. Yet it feels like I'm really talking to you at this very moment, when in fact, this was recorded in the past. Fine. So what about what's really happening around you? Let's take a look at that. You're either sitting on something like a chair or a couch, and you feel your weight on it. If you're standing, I'll ask you to move your attention to how solid the ground feels under you, or even how your shoes feel on your feet. Deprive someone of that feeling of solidity through touch, as in a floating tank, and you may start to feel like you no longer have a body. How about my voice? If you're listening through speakers, does my voice exist between the speakers and your ears? If you're wearing earbuds, it should sound like I'm talking to you from the very center of your head. Obviously, I'm not. The point of all this is that your brain lies to you. And you have no idea because you have no reason to question it. You just go about your business every day. The last thing you want to do is start thinking about how your brain is not giving you the correct information about your own existence. You have bills to pay. But imagine if all your senses were stimulated artificially, such as with virtual reality. Even with the stimulation of just two senses, say vision and hearing, the experience begin to feel pretty real. If all of your senses were stimulated, imagine that, vision, hearing, touch, taste, smell. At some point, you would find it very difficult to know what's real versus what's not. Give me access to all of your senses and I will give you the world, any of my choosing. So that leads to a very important question. How can you really trust what your senses tell you? It's not whether a world outside of you exists that is questionable, but whether you perceive that world as it is, because you do not. Okay, so let's take a look under the hood now and take a closer look at what's really happening. Take this tree, for example. Do you see this tree the way it really is? Consider this. The reason you see it at all is because light bounces up that tree before it reaches your eyes. Then your eyes transform that information from that light into a language that your brain can understand. Electrochemical signals. Let's simplify. The signals are just a special type of chit-chat that your brain cells, neurons in this case, like to engage in. Note that there is no tree anywhere along this path of communication and that the information about that tree has already been transformed considerably. At some point in this journey, which is extremely fast, this chit-chat is interpreted by your brain as the tree that you see. But this tree that you experience is not the one outside. It is the one constructed by your brain based on information processed by these neurons. That tree only exists in your mind. I'm not saying the tree is not real. Just that what you see is an experience constructed by your brain. You're not seeing the real tree. So now you can ask, hmm, so what does the real tree really look like? You know, the one that's out there. A typical reaction to what I just said might go like this. Look, the tree is out there. I can see it. I don't care what my brain is doing. I know it's giving me information that's useful, but the tree is there in the distance, and I can walk up to it. Now think about putting on those virtual reality goggles again. If these goggles displayed a tree that looks like it's out there, one you can walk up to, is it any more real? The fact that you see it and that you have a solid impression of physical space between you and that tree means nothing. It's all a compelling illusion. But for the virtual reality equipment, it's just a display on the screen. In this case, there really is no tree there, and the experience is just as compelling. 
Now you may say, one minute, I can go touch that tray. Why, yeah? But it's the same problem. They say you go touch the trunk. There are touch receptors inside your hands that convert the texture of that tree into electrical chemical signals again that travel to your brain. Once again, based on internal chit-chat, your brain will create a feeling that you refer to a feeling of rough and even cold or whatever. You may have heard this question. If a tree falls in the woods and there's no one there to hear it, does it make a sound? The answer is, it depends. And it depends on how you define sound. When that tree falls, it creates ripples in the air. And then those ripples hit your ears. Those ripples are, again, transformed into those signals that your brain will interpret as the typical noise associated with a tree falling. Those ripples, however, are completely silent. There is nothing, I promise you, in the universe that makes any noise whatsoever. The noise that you hear is just an experience inside your mind, and it's your brain's way of telling you that a tree is falling. So if you define sound as the noise that you hear instead of the silent ripples, then that tree makes no sound whatsoever when it falls. Now I can anticipate what some of you may be thinking. What if you put a recording device there to play later? Didn't it record the sound that the tree made when it crashed? Because you can now play it back. Well, no. In this case, a recording device simply records the silent ripples in the air. It is only when someone with a brain, human or animal, plays that recording back that that device replicates those ripples through its speakers and the brain can now create the noise once again based on those silent ripples. This is the situation you're in. You're in a room with no windows. All you have to connect you to the outside world is a video screen and speakers. We leave out the other senses for now. All you know about the outside world comes through a video camera and a microphone outside that room. Do you trust what they tell you? Could you be fooled? If you could open that door that leads outside, could you sneak past that screen and speakers and have a direct experience of the world? Here's the bad news. As long as you rely on your senses, you can only experience the world through a translation device that is your brain. No direct experience is possible. You just have to accept that. But I have two pieces of potential good news. First, from a functional standpoint, it doesn't matter if the brain does not report the world as it is. The brain is really good at giving you just enough information to help you duck if a rock is thrown at you, not to step in front of a bus, and dial 911 if your house is on fire. So at a minimum, that brain is an awesome survival machine. Second, many people have actually claimed to have experienced reality as it is. If you believe that you are your brain, then that is not possible because then your experience is entirely dependent on it. But if you are something separate from it, from your brain, and viewing life through it, like through a filter, then maybe there is a way to look around that filter or remove it altogether. This would be like opening that door from that dark room. Now please understand that the following is based on anecdotal evidence only, so they do not consist of proof of anything. But due to the extraordinary number of reports on this, it's worthy of interest. One way to see the world as it is, maybe, I'm sorry to say, to die. I'm referring to what is known as NDEs, or near-death experiences, in which people who have been reported as clinically dead actually came back to life. A notable example is Harvard neuroscientist and brain surgeon Dr. Eben Alexander. Reputable individuals, including scientists, medical professionals, and other respectable and trustworthy individuals of all walks of life have had this experience. It has been estimated that as much as 9 million people in the U.S. alone have had an NDE. I have a link to the paper referring to these statistics in the description below. What NDE experiences consistently report when they pass is the world that is richer, more real, more full than this one. What's interesting is that, for many, death was like waking from the dream of life. Imagine that. 
The other way to have a taste of reality as it is, maybe through developing strong skills in meditation. Now, this is only for the serious meditators. And those who succeeded in deeply quieting their brain have reported a direct connection to a deeper reality that resembles that of an NDE. I'll eventually post a video on both of these topics, so watch out for them. Finally, there are many, many cool optical illusions out there, but some of those will blow your mind because they're really good at giving you a behind the scene look at what the brain is doing to fool you when you're in the act of perceiving the world. So here's a couple of them. First, the Checker Shadow Illusion by Edward Adelson, and then the Spanish Castle Illusion by John Sadowski. I have links and an explanation for each in the description below. Make sure to see them if you're still convinced that your perception of reality is accurate. If you want to dig a little deeper down this rabbit hole and into the matrix, I also give you a couple of links to TED Talks by scientists who discuss this further. So if you like this video and you want to see more like this one, please like and subscribe, and don't be afraid to tell me your thoughts in the comments below. For now, enjoy your reality.